Martha Wangari Karua is popularly known as the Iron Lady of Kenya. Her political career runs way back to the early 1990s at the onset of multipartism when she was elected Gishugu Member of Parliament on a Democratic Party ticket. She has served in various capacities, both in the backbench and later in President Mwai Kibaki's government. Well, here's NTV's Sydney Chazima with an overview of Martha Karua's journey to standing on the cusp of history as potentially Kenya's first female deputy president. She is easily one of the most recognizable female politicians in Kenya. Once described by an analyst as the only man in the cabinet of the now deceased President Mwai Kibaki, Martha Wangare Karua has cut the image of a no-nonsense politician. A straight talker, the Iron Lady of Kenyan politics. Karua burst onto the political scene in the heydays of the Daniel R. Moy era as a fierce human rights defender, risking life and limb as she defended in court some of the harshest critics of the then Kano regime. Her mother, who still holds great hopes for her, says something about her always stood out. Ambassador, thank you so much. Born on the 22nd of September 1957 in the present-day county of Kirinyaga, Martha Karua was raised in the village of Kimunye in what is now Gishugu constituency, which she will later represent in parliament. Karua attended Mugumo Primary School, then Kabare Girls Boarding School, before proceeding for a secondary education at Kiburia Girls Secondary School, Giriambu Girls and Karoti Girls. She did her A-levels at Nairobi Girls Secondary School, before pursuing her law degree at the University of Nairobi between 1977 and 1980. In 1981, she enrolled at the Kenya School of Law for her admission to the bar. She kicked off her law practice in 1981, working as a magistrate in various courts, including those at Makadara, Nakuru and Kibera. In 1987, she left to start her own law firm, Martha Karua and Co. Advocates, which she ran until 2002. Her high-profile cases included the treason trial of former political detainee Koegi Wamwere and now deceased former member of parliament Mirugi Karioki, <laughs> as well as similar cases involving the current Azimio Laomoja presidential aspirant Raila Odinga, who was himself a political detainee. At the height of the agitation for political pluralism, Karua was part of the cast of activists that pushed for what is famously known as the Second Liberation, when the infamous Section 2A of the Constitution was repealed, giving way for multipartism, she hitched wagons with Ford Asili, led by now deceased former cabinet minister Kenneth Matiba. She walked out of the party protesting what she saw as lack of democracy in its elections and joined Bwai Kibaki-led Democratic Party of Kenya and proceeded to win the 1992 general election on the party's ticket as MP for Gishugu, failing veteran politician Geoffrey Karevi. Seen by admirers as a principled politician, Karua declined a shadow cabinet position in DP, insisting that it would conflict with her role as the party's national secretary for legal and constitutional affairs. <laughs> She is remembered for having walked out of a function staged by President Moi. <laughs> protesting his continued reign, among other things. In the sunset years of the Kano regime, Karua would team up with other opposition figures to found the formidable political juggernaut NAC, which eventually defeated the Grand Old Party, bringing to a screeching halt its 40-year grip on power. She became the Minister for Water in the new government and is credited with leading bold reforms in the water sector. But 2007 will go down as a low moment for Kenya and for Karua, a moment in the spotlight as she emerged as a fierce defender of President Mwai Kibaki's disputed electoral victory. She would accuse the opposition, then led by Raila Odinga, of having planned the post-election violence, which she controversially referred to as ethnic cleansing. In the ensuing peace process, she was often referred to as one of the hardliners in Kibaki's corner. When PNU 
for a time, years are happening. As the negotiations, which were known as Serena Talks, dragged on. Never shy to take a position, however unpopular, Karua stormed out of Kibaki's government to the dismay of friend and foe, citing alleged frustration. She claimed that as the Minister for Justice, she had been kept in the dark in the appointment of new judges to the bench. I have uh, tendered my resignation as uh, Minister for Justice, National Cohesion and Constitutional Affairs because I feel my position as Minister is untenable. Ever the ambitious woman, Karua took a stab at the country's top job in 2013 under the NAC Kenya Party ticket, finishing sixth with 43,881 votes. Four years later, during the 2017 general election, Karua tried to bounce back by seeking for a gubernatorial seat in Kirinyaga County, but she lost to the current governor, Ann Waiguru, in an election whose results she unsuccessfully challenged all the way to the Supreme Court. Karua's choice as running mate is seen by observers as an attempt by Raila Odinga and the Azimio team to dangle a different carrot to the vote-rich Mount Kenya region that already has Mathira MP Rigathi Gashagwa as the running mate on the Kenya Kwanzaa side. A recognizable name and a resident of the Mount Kenya West, Azimio will be banking on her to claw back some of the major gains made by DP William Ruto in the region. She also comes with the gender card essentially becoming the first woman to be nominated to the coveted slot by a major political party. Indeed, just a few weeks ago, several female politicians in Azimio had pushed for the nomination of Karua to the number two slot, saying time was ripe for a female candidate to be part of the presidency. Baba, please make sure you give us somebody with a reform agenda. Lata Fadali Baba! Sisi Kamawa Mama! Let it be a woman. Let it be a woman. Further analysts believe her forceful personality may have been a major factor, with her backers arguing that she would be a formidable counterweight to Raila Odinga and a defender of the region should Raila attempt to renegade on his promises in the event he wins the presidential race. Karua has maintained that the new government must fight corruption to save Kenya. And her backers believe she will afford Raila Odinga's campaign the possibility of making corruption an election issue. Yeah. Karua is now a heartbeat away from making history, but she will have to deliver a sizable chunk of the vote in the Mount Kenya region. <laughs> and among female voters to stand a chance of being Kenya's second deputy president under the 2010 constitution and only the first ever female one in the country's history. Sydney Chazima, NTV.